Hey guys, this video is on molecular polarity. So we already know that a bond can be either polar or nonpolar, depending upon the difference in the electronegativity of the two atoms that make up the bond. Um, for example, in hydrogen fluoride, uh, we saw this before, fluorine um, has an electronegativity of 4.0, hydrogen is 2.1. The difference is 1.9. Remember our, our you know, roughly, you know, our, our guidelines, if it's bigger, the difference is bigger than 0.4, it's a polar bond. So we know that fluorine, um, there's a region of negative charge around the fluorine atom, reason of a region of positive charge around the hydrogen atom. There are two poles, it has a dipole moment, it's what we call polar. Now, <clears throat> um, we're going to talk about molecules being polar or nonpolar too. But in order to attempt anyway to show three-dimensional structure, we need to introduce wedge dash notation. So what this is, is just an attempt to, in two dimensions, depict a three-dimensional structure. Um, in wedge dash notation, um, the bonds were rep represented by either a wedge, a dash, um, dashes rather, or a line. A wedge means that the atom that's on the end of that, the, the, the long side of that, is coming out of the plane towards you. A line means the atom that's on the end of that line is in the plane, and dashes mean the atom that's at the end of the line, the long line, is going away from you, back into the plane. So for example, we know that methane, CH4, um, if we use Vesper theory and apply that, we see that the central atom has four electron groups, zero lone pairs. This is a tetrahedral molecule. So it's a tetrahedron. And the way we would show that with wedges and dashes is just like this, where this hydrogen would be actually kind of lifting out of the plane of the screen towards you. This hydrogen with the dashes will be going back into the screen, away from you, and these two hydrogens would be in the plane of the screen. Okay, so now with that, we can talk about molecular polarity. So um, we, we have three or more atoms. Um, in the, um, a molecule can be polar or nonpolar, just like um, a single bond, uh, a bond can be. Um, these two molecules end up being nonpolar because although they contain polar bonds, the effects of those polar bonds, the pull on the electrons, cancels. So if we look at carbon dioxide here, um, oxygen's electronegativity is 3.5, carbon's 2.5. The difference is 1.0, definitely a polar bond. However, um, the molecular geometry is linear. The central carbon has two electron groups, zero lone pairs. This is a linear molecule, 180 degree bond angle. And so the more electronegative oxygen on this end is pulling the electrons away from the carbon towards itself with exactly, exactly the same strength that this oxygen is pulling electrons in this bond towards the carbon towards itself. Those two pulls exactly cancel, and so those electron, that electron density, the electron cloud, does not shift one way or the other. And so this is a non-polar molecule. Um, there is no positive and negative region. Um, likewise with carbon tetrafluoride. Even though fluorine is really electronegative, um, these are definitely polar bonds. So fluorine's electronegativity is 4.0. Carbon's is 2.5. The difference is 1.5. Um, uh, tetrahedron is a symmetric shape. These bond angles are all 109.5 degrees, symmetrically arranged. So even though each fluorine is pulling the electrons towards itself away from the carbon, their pulls all cancel, and this is a non-polar molecule. These molecules, on the other hand, are polar, and the basic reason is because they have at least one polar bond, and the polar bond or bonds are not symmetric, they're asymmetric. Um, the poles do not cancel. So in ammonia, okay, um, nitrogen's electronegativity is 3.0, hydrogen's 2.1, the difference is 0.9, polar bonds. Um, the, the shape, the molecular geometry, is trigonal pyramidal, four electron groups, one lone pair. And so this is just like a, a, a tripod sitting on the ground. Um, and these, the nitrogen is pulling the electrons, the more electronegative nitrogen is pulling the electrons away from each of the hydrogens, and the hydrogens are, are um, not canceling, their effects are not canceling out. And so overall, there's a negative region in this molecule up somewhere by the nitrogen, and there's, a, there's positive regions down here by the, the hydrogens. Um, or if you look at it as a cloud, that hydrogen, um, excuse me, the positive region would be centered somewhere in the, you know, underneath here. Um, 
formethane. Um, this molecule, okay, um, it looks a lot like methane we saw before, except one of the hydrogens has been replaced by fluorine. So this is a tetrahedral molecule, four electron groups, zero lone pairs, um, but it's not symmetric. There's this one very electronegative fluorine pulling electrons towards itself away from everything else, not balanced by the hydrogens. Um, it's an asymmetric molecule, it's polar bonds in it, they do not, they're not opposing each other, so there is a negative region and a positive region, and this is a polar molecule. Likewise with water, um, hydrogen's electronegativity is 2.1, oxygen's 3.5, difference of 1.4, the bonds are polar. Um, the shape is bent, four electron groups on the central atom, two lone pairs, and so it looks pretty much just like this drawing for once, you know, um, even though this is in two dimensions. And so the oxygen is pulling the electrons away from the hydrogens and the poles are not balanced. So overall there is a negative region in this molecule and a positive region. So this is a polar molecule. So you know, this is a, sort of a little, a little synopsis of how to figure out if a molecule is polar. Um, usually it's best to draw the Lewis structure. There are a few molecules you can, if, you, if you're you know, um, used to this stuff, you can look at them and tell. But, um, Pretty much draw the Lewis structure, figure out if there are any polar bonds in the molecule. If there are no polar bonds at all, um, then you can stop because there's no way that molecule is going to be polar. You can say right away, this is a non-polar molecule. You can even do this step before if, if, if you can picture the structure in your mind. Um, but okay, once you get past this step, okay, if there are polar bonds, then determine the molecular geometry. So Vesper theory. And then with, within that geometry, determine if the polar bonds in that molecule are arranged asymmetrically, not canceling other, each other out. If they are asymmetric, then the molecule is polar. If they're symmetric, the molecule is nonpolar. So let's apply this to this example. So we want to figure out which, if any, of these molecules is polar. Sulfur trioxide, iodine trifluoride, and nitrogen trifluoride. So um, what we do is um, draw the Lewis structures, um, figured out that in sulfur trioxide, um, oxygen's electronegativity is 3.5, um, sulfur's is um, 2.5, yeah, 2.5, um, so the difference in electronegativity of 1.0, definitely polar bonds. Um, the shape, though, is trigonal planar, and that means that each of these polar bonds balances all the others. Um, these are all 120 degree bond angles, and so because the bonds are symmetric, symmetrically opposed, counteracting each other, the molecule is nonpolar. Now with iodine trifluoride, okay, that once again, there are um, polar bonds. Um, fluorine is 4.0. Um, iodine is, I think, 2.5, is it? Um, 2.5, yeah. And so a difference of 1.5, um, definitely polar bonds. The shape um, is T-shaped, right? Five electron groups, two lone pairs. So this is not a symmetric shape. The bonds, the polar bonds, are not symmetrically opposed. Um, they do not cancel each other out. They're asymmetrically arranged, so this is a polar molecule. Likewise with nitrogen trifluoride, um, the bonds are polar. Um, 4.0 for fluorine's electronegativity, three, uh, yeah, 3.0 for nitrogen, so difference of 1.0, polar bonds. The shape is trigonal pyramidal, and so this again looks like a, a pyramid. Um, the poles are not balanced. The fluorines are pulling the electrons away from the nitrogen, and they don't. Their poles do not balance each other. It's asymmetric, and so the molecule is polar. And that's all there is to it, guys.